Plymouth is probably not the best place to go if you want to learn the Queen's English. Not unless Her Majesty has started speaking like a pirate, that is. However, what Plymouth lacks in linguistic sophistication, it definitely makes up in national heroes. Study their history and culture, and you may just learn more than you think about the language. Situated in the far west of England, today, as many locals will tell you, the city of Plymouth is cut off both geographically and politically. In Drake's time, that is, in and around the 16th century, things were very different here. Then, Plymouth was at the forefront of both internal and external national affairs. In the scramble for empire, England had been left far behind by Portugal and Spain. So, understandably, Queen Elizabeth decided she wanted an empire as well. Projecting out towards the Atlantic, Plymouth was a perfect port for exploration and discovery. This game of catch-up, often by any means possible, was a chance numerous sailors within the city took with relish. People like Sir Humphrey Gilbert, Sir Richard Grenville, Sir Walter Raleigh, Sir John Hawkins, and of course, Sir Francis Drake. In this, the first episode in our series on Drake, we go in search of his Plymouth. From his humble beginnings to becoming the richest and most famous man in all of England. <laughs>